I would like hair like yours, soft and shiny. Why don't you have something different for a change? <laughs> no way. Leave it out, Mum. Just the normal. I wish I could wear nice clothes. Well, you do. That top really suits you. It's a lovely colour. I should have got one for myself. I'm sick of wearing old granny clothes. I just want to go out and buy myself something nice. Something pretty. I know you do, love. I know you do. Curry has just dropped this lot off. What's that, Jess Harding? Mm-hmm. Hearings tomorrow. Oh, I haven't got time to read all this. Just read what you can. Why they've dragged me into it, I don't know. I hardly know him. Well, just go and answer whatever questions they throw at you. That's all you can do. Yeah, but if I say the wrong thing, Jess could end up being taken away from her mum. Well, might be for the best. Kevin went to see Jess the other day. He seems to think the mum's to blame for the state she's in and maybe he's got a point. Oh, I don't know. Are you just going to stand around moaning or are you going to do something? Online job lot bargain. The entire Jane Austen canon, a bit dog-eared, but nonetheless readable. Oh, treasure trove. Oh, Lady Susan. Well, we've got everything we need now for the readathon. So, who will you approach? We, Mrs. Tembe, will approach them all. Oh, well, now this will be quite a challenge. There is a stubbornness about me that can never bear to be frightened with the will of others. They are in for such a treat. <laughs> Schoolwork's a waste of time. We all need an education. What for? I can't get out of the house to go to school. Never mind get a job. And dude want me. Lots of people and we can't have you falling behind with your schoolwork. Or we'll have them on our back on top of everything else. Now, why didn't Mr Darcy want to dance with Elizabeth? Because she was fat and ugly like me. Who's a Miss Moody today? Stop putting yourself down. You're gorgeous. You will read a Jane Austen novel. You will be questioned on the knowledge gleaned. You'll have to get lots of generous sponsors because you will be doing this for charity. If it's for charity, why can't we just read what we want? Because we are commemorating the 200th anniversary of the publication of Pride and Prejudice. Uh, see, I'd rather read Chris Ryan or Mario Puzo or something. Oh, yeah, now we're talking The Godfather. Uh. <laughs> Look at him, Masco, my boy. <laughs> Jane Austen, she sleeps with fishes. <laughs> when you do have quite finished, this is a Jane Austen readathon. Austen, am I clear? Right, so you want me to read some 200-year-old twaddle written by a frustrated spinster? Yes! I had rather not, so, uh, I'm out. Am I ready? Gotta go. You Philistines. Heston. I'll have to give it a miss, I'm afraid. I'm far too busy to do the great lady's work justice. Oh, well, you as well. But you and Miss Austin have so much in common. Really? Such a grasp of humanity. A rare trait. Only to be found in our most dashing young men. I'm more of a Dickens man. I knew you would not let us down. Beautifully executed. You okay, love? I can't get comfortable. Oh, I should have given you this earlier. I don't want it. Oh, not again. The doctor said you've got to take it. It makes me feel sick. I'll take it later, I promise. Don't you ever feel like a prisoner, Mum? 
Of course I don't. What's brought this on? What do I need to go out for? I've got everything I want here and I'm happy looking after you. I tell you what, as you've been so good, have a biscuit. One can't hurt. Ooh, that'll be Nurse Mandy. Oh, hi, Mandy. Come in. Sorry, I should have called first. No, you're all right. You're welcome any time. Come and take a seat. Oh, studying? Yeah, the school just lets me know what Jess needs to be working on. I don't want her falling behind. It's good. I teach her everything. Maths, history, English. Tomorrow we're doing Animal Farm by Orson Wells. George Orwell, Mum. <sighs> Try to read that once. Just have it going. I don't mind it. It's got a meaning behind it. Russian Revolution and all that. <laughs> and all animals are equal. You can really get into it. Beats watching telly. <laughs> so, how are you feeling? All right. And how are the pressure sores? They still... They're a bit better, aren't they, love them? I cleaned them last night and this morning, didn't I? Look, then, eh? And she's been keeping to the diet, haven't you? Yeah. Stores haven't got any better, have they? Well, they've not got any worse. Just give it time. And my heels have started to crack. Too much weight on them. It's just one thing after another. They'll end up taking me away, won't they? What do you want, Jess? I want to stay here with my mum. I know I can lose the weight. And now I've got your help. I know I can do it. I just wish people would leave us alone. Please don't let them take me away. Please. Oh, I, just, I don't know if I have any... A healthy salad. If that doctor yesterday could see this, he'd realise how well she eats. I didn't like him. I didn't like him at all. Dr Tyler. I found him very rude and he didn't understand what me and Jess were going through. Did he? Well, I'm sure whatever he said was in Jesse's best interest. You didn't hear how he talked to me. I get that from everyone except you. You understand how difficult it is. If we didn't have you on our side, we'd have no one. Okay, but you've got to show social services that you want to change. And that's not just about cutting down on food. It's about knowing what types of food to eat. I mean, take that, for instance. It's dripping in calories and fat. But it's a salad. <laughs> yeah, but there's huge pools of mayonnaise, like piles of grated cheese and buttered white bread. I mean, they're all no-nos, Vanessa. Everything I do is wrong. It's all right, Mum. I'm not hungry anyway. Look what you've done now. You've given her a complex about eating it. It's not her fault. I'm just not hungry. She can't go from having huge plates of food, sweets and crisps, to eating a few sticks of celery. It's unrealistic and she wouldn't be able to stick to it. Sorry, having someone come in and examine everything you do has to be rotten for you. I do my best, but I always seem to slip up. Well, the main salad was good and healthy, and for all I know, the cheese and mayonnaise were low fat. It's the little changes that make a difference. Jess used to have the social workers standing over her while she ate. The dietitians tell her to live on nuts and lentils. I don't even know what a lentil is, and I was too embarrassed to ask. You should never be embarrassed to ask questions. And then they put us in some type of big brother house. We were watched for 24 hours a day, like my Jess was some kind of lab rat, a freak. She's not. She's my daughter. Vanessa, Jess has to lose weight for health and mobility reasons. I know that. And I want her to get healthy and move about and wear the clothes that she wants. And everybody thinks I'm a bad mother, but I'm not. And if you don't do what they tell you to do, they threaten to take your child away.
So definitely. A woman of taste. Oh, but can I have persuasion? It's the only one I haven't read. Oh, it's just such a relief to find someone who actually wants to take part. Oh, resistance from the men? They have no imagination. Well, to quote Miss Austen, the person, be they gentleman or lady, who does not have pleasure in a good novel must be intolerably stupid. Good. Bravo. Is anyone going to ask me? Howard, will you please take part? I'd love to. Good man. Well, you'll like this one. It's got sailors. Uh, one of the main characters is a naval captain, uh, just like you were. So you should have plenty in common. I was in the army, Mrs. Tembe. Both leaders of men. Hmm? Uh, now, Captain Wentworth was very young and handsome. Ah, uh, that's where the similarity ends. <laughs> he was also madly in love. A woman stole his heart. As they do. Thanks a lot. You've been brilliant. Well, it is my job. When you're here, it really perks her up. Makes her feel she can change. She can. Look, I know I don't always get it right, but I do try. See ya. See ya. It's a shame they're not all like her. Do you think she'll put in a good word for us tomorrow? I hope so. She can see that we're trying. She's more understanding than the others. You must be really hungry. I'll get you something else. No, I can't, Mum. I just don't feel like eating. It's because you're not used to eating all that rabbit food. You shouldn't have told the nurse about your cracked heels. Why not? Because that's just something else they can add to the list. Another thing that they can blame me for. Right, up you come, love. What for? Your exercises. No. We can't keep putting it off. I'm too tired. Oh, come on, Jess, please, love. Just five minutes. We've got to make a start. My legs hurt. You've got to move about more. Just little by little, and the more you do, the easier it'll get. So now you're having a go at me. Don't be like that. I'm just you trying... You know how much it hurts me when I stand? I can't help it. All right, all right. We'll start tomorrow. Sorry, Mum. I will do it. Tomorrow. Promise. Snap. Funny that, you've been an Austin fan. Why? Mm. No reason. We could test each other on our knowledge for the readathon. Mm. Don't see why not. Mm. Usually read McNabb. Yes, well, at least you're making an effort, which is more than could be said for some around here. Yeah, apparently, it's got sailors in it. Mm. Of course, it's during the period of the uh, Napoleon, it was. Didn't know she wrote about that stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, it's hardly going to be master and commander, is it? No, I don't want to get your hopes up. I'm chat to you. Howard. Sorry. These will stop you picking your nose. I don't do that. I'm only playing. Do you fancy a cup of hot chocolate? I could do you one with skim milk. It won't be fattening then. No, Ta. Still don't feel right. I feel sick. I'll get you a bowl. Maybe you should call the doctor. What, and have him come back here lecturing me again? No way. And if we keep phoning up with every ache and pain, they'll be sure to take you away. I'll get you a glass of warm milk. That'll settle your tummy. I just called on the off chance. The receptionist said you were due back. What do you want? We need to talk about the Harding case. I would have come earlier, but there was a meeting and I just... Um, actually, is there anywhere private we could talk? Jeez. 
Jimmy. I wonder if you no. would be... No. Go away. But Mrs. Tembe has thoughtfully cleaned the cover with an antibacterial wipe. <laughs> What's your aversion? Are you scared that there's going to be too many long words? No, I just don't want to read it. Big bloomers don't really do that much for me. Well, then stop wearing them. No. <sighs> How's your car, Jimmy? Why dress that? No reason. Just the state of the roads these days. There are so many potholes, and some of them are so huge one could easily get a blowout. And after one got a blowout, one could so easily then be perceived to be crawling along in one's car. And if a police car passed, one could so easily think that the police car thought that you were <laughs> curb crawling. What's Karen been saying? Karen? No, I, don't, I wasn't curb crawling. No, 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 that's a, just a preposterous allegation. It's just a misunderstanding. I stopped the side of the curb to be able to ask this girl where the nearest garage was. That was just happened she to was a hooker, and I didn't know. And then a policeman saw me, got on the wrong end of the stick, and then he saw the tire. Uh, please, Jimmy, Jimmy, please. There is no need to defend yourself. I, for one, believe you. I've only come back to pick up my stuff and go home. Right, I just thought you might like to go over what's going to happen at the hearing tomorrow. Are you trying to influence what I say? No, of course not. No, just the proceedings and what to expect, that's all. Any other details would be factual and in the documents you already have. I hate this part of the job. Oh, you're not alone, but we have to have them, with no choice. I mean, and why does it have to be in a magistrate's court? It makes everything so formal. I agree, but the English jurisdiction system isn't down to me. What if they try and twist my words? Why would they do that? They want you there so they can find out more about this family, to see if Jess is getting the care she needs. No one is there to trip you up. Man, would you? Is this cosy? Fleur's here in a case, so. Are you plotting to take another child away from its family? Who are you dishing the dirt on this time? I'm sorry if you're still upset with me. I don't get upset, I get angry. Sarah... No. Do you get some kind of warped satisfaction out of breaking up families? I'll get going. Does the power feel good? tired and I really haven't got the strength to go another round. How about a round of drinks? Sounds good to me. Mum, I feel worse. Do you want to watch a DVD to take your mind off it? I need to go to the loo. OK, love. Come on, then. You... Come on, then, Dan. You've got to take some of the weight. Right. Yes! Cheers. Yeah, you got me too. Who did? The Austin Mafia. What was it? A pincer movement? A bonnet on each side closing in. Uh, Zara, blackmail. Mm -hmm. Commiserations. <laughs> They're only asking us to read a book. Good night, gentlemen. Night. Night. I'll happily give money to the charity. I just don't want to read the damn book. Well, I did not think for one moment that you would. Why not? Well, uh, some shy away from her books. Miss Austin writes about the emotional needs of women. What they are looking for in a man. Any man who reads one of her books will have the emotional key to a woman's desires. Her heart. Well then. He will understand a woman's fundamental yearnings and needs. And I get all of this from from that. Knowledge is power. Now, I think you said that to me once. I, actually, I'm, I'll download it to my device. I just think the best place for Jess is with her mother. You've read the files? Well, I've not read all of them. 
Mandy, social services have had a relationship, a close relationship, with mother and daughter for over two years. And the only thing that's changed is Jess's weight. It's gone up. Really? And when she could go to school, she hardly ever attended. She refused to do PE. She said the other kids bullied her. And then, to top it all, the school canteen barred her. Why? Because it was self-service and Jess didn't know when to stop eating. So the school thought it would be in her best interest if she were to have packed lunches. Right, and that was chocolate, crisps, fizzy drinks. Yeah. Her previous doctor also had concerns about medication and Jess's general health. Vanessa tries her best, but I just... I don't think she's got a handle on it. Like it sounds harsh, but some people's best just isn't good enough. We think Vanessa is the weak link. Jess needs help and guidance, and Vanessa needs to be firm with her. And I don't think she's capable of it. So they're running out of chances. We've tried everything. They've been monitored 24 hours a day. She's seen numerous dietitians, joined fitness centres, swimming clubs. We've done it all. And Jess is still being abused. <sighs> well, what else would you call it? Hello, Jess. I'm Dr. Carmichael. Can you hear me? Well, how long has she been like this? She says she wasn't feeling well a couple of hours ago. Why didn't you call the surgery or better still an ambulance? I thought it might be something she'd eaten. Well, when was the last time that she ate? Uh, breakfast time. Uh, one or two biscuits, that's all. Ambulance. Hello, yes, this is Dr. Carmichael from the Mill Health Centre. I have a 14-year-old girl, morbidly obese, acute abdomen. She's febrile and tachycardic. You give me the address. Hello, Jess, can yes, you hear me? Uh, hello. Can hello, you hear me? 28 can you hear me, average. Jess? Yes, thank you. Bye. When was the last time she took her medication? You'll be all right, love. I'll stay with you. Mrs. Harding, when was the last time you gave her her medication? Just going to the hospital will soon make you better and then you can come home. She will be all right, won't she? Some of the kids that go into care end up putting on weight, so what's the point in taking that risk with Jess? You're right, unfortunately. So why chance it? Because things can't stay the way they are. And if she goes into care, then she won't have a mother to depend on as her feeder. And she'd be encouraged to exercise, and both those things would have positive effects on her health, and that's our main concern. What's it going to do to Vanessa, having her daughter taken away? Our duty of care is to Jess. <sighs> I don't know how you do this job. Oh, well, luckily, it's not like this every day. But let's face facts, OK? If Jess's health continues to deteriorate, I'll be closing the file, but it'll be for the wrong reason. You're in safe hands, Jess. The doctor will soon make you better. Could you give me some room, please? When can she come home? <laughs> Not for some time. Um, we're going to need to do some more tests. Dr Newport, hi. How is Jess doing? Uh, early indication of pancreatitis. I strongly suspect that the mother hasn't been giving her her medication. Well, that would account for why she's here, that along with a poor diet. But we'll need to do some further tests before we know for sure. They could hardly get her into the ambulance. Yeah, she's been here a few times. This isn't going to go down well at the hearing. What hearing? Social services, care order, tomorrow. Well, surely that'll be postponed. I don't know. But right now, that really is the least of her problems. Excuse me. I think she's looking a little better. Why haven't you been giving Jess her medication? It gives us a we ache and she doesn't like the taste of it. You do realise the importance of the low cholesterol diet? Of 
course I do, but I don't always know what's got cholesterol in it. It confuses me, and I've been in the shops for hours if I had to keep looking at every label. You stupid, stupid woman. You can't talk to me like that. Your daughter is suffering from acute pancreatitis. That is a very serious condition. The gallstones may have caused a blockage, and you not giving her her medication won't have helped. Nor will the poor diet. But she likes her food, and I just want her to be happy. I love her. She's all I've got. I've heard about the hearing. They're going to take her away from me, aren't they? Mrs Harding, I don't think you understand the seriousness of your daughter's condition. If part of the pancreas dies and blood poisoning develops, that could lead to organ failure. Jess could die. Howard, it's your lucky day. You with me? What do you want? Hey! She would like things to change. It won't happen by taking her away from me. Miss Harding, you will speak only when you're invited to do so. I'm in business for profit. You're a con man. All I'm asking is for the court's permission to have one more try. Dr. Carmichael, am I too late? It's time for Dex 